Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for being here today. Today's video is going to be my March TBR and I'm really excited about it. I meant to put this at the end of my February wrap up and then I saw the pile of books and I was like, never mind. <laughs> Let's save everyone the trouble of uh, just chaotic energy. So <laughs> um, anyway, I, uh, I have quite a bundle of books and I'm really excited about them. I will say just real quick, I mentioned this at the beginning of my February wrap up, but there is an exciting thing happening very soon that I've been working on since the summer. Um, I read a bunch of Greek retellings in order to fuel this project. And um, it comes out very, very soon. So, uh, you know, if you would like to check it out, you can click the link in my description to sign up for updates. But yeah, I'm really, really thrilled about how everything came together. So anyway, let's get into the books. I have two books for book club. I have a couple books for school. I have a, a mental health kind of self-improvement book a sci-fi, a romance, just kind of all over the place. I definitely won't be finishing all of these in March, but these are the books that I'm currently really excited about. So let's do this thing. All right, so let's talk book club, the late night book club that I run with Joel and Elias. Our February book was Loveless, but our live show for it is not happening until the middle of March. So I have some extra time to read it. I'm really thrilled about this book. I'm really excited we're reading it for February, February's book. And um, I've heard really good things about it, so I'm thrilled. And then the March book club pick is The Fifth Season. This is a, I think it's a high fantasy, um, right? That's what it would be considered. High fantasy, correct? I think it's a big bitch. Let's talk about it. I'm really excited for this one. I think it's gonna really get me out of my comfort zone. It's the winner of the Hugo Award and Ultimately, I just think it's going to be really fun to read and discuss with Elias and Joel and all of you on the live show, which will happen at the beginning of April. So this is the March book pick, but it'll happen at the beginning of April. So you have a month to read it. And I'm thrilled. I got the physical copy so I could annotate it and like really take notes. So hope it goes well. Next up, in honor of... March, St. Patrick's Day, Irish Heritage Month, we're gonna be reading Love by Roddy Doyle. Um, I kind of mentioned this in my latest book haul, um, but it says, two old friends reconnect in Dublin for a dramatic revealing of evening of drinking and storytelling in this winning novel. So um, it sounds like it's gonna be, oh, love offers a delightfully comic yet moving portrait of the many forms love can take throughout our lives. Love it. Love it. <laughs> right? <laughs> totally. But yeah, I think it'll be a good March book and it's pretty short, so it's achievable. All right, this next book is a book that's been on my radar for a long time and it's Pisces season. I'm doing that because I'm a Pisces. That's why I'm doing this without any words. Without any words at all, that's what this is. Um, anyway, uh, and that is The Pisces. Now, the cover is giving me Shape of Water. It's giving me falling in love with a fish, housing him in my bathtub kind of vibe. Um, and I think I'm not far off, <laughs> if I can be honest. Um, oh! Lucy is our main character's name. Love the name. Um, and, you know, when my hair was longer, it was giving me this, you know what I mean? So I just hear it's weird. And um, for some people, it's weird in a great way. For other people, it's weird in the wrong way. But I guess we're going to find out, hopefully this month, how it lands for me. So... Yeah. A book for school I am planning to read in March is Native Son by Richard Wright. This I have heard only really fantastic things about. It is a long book. Not only is, is it a long book, but it is a hearty book, right? Like that. those are words that are asking to be read. I also have an audiobook for it. So it's gonna be annotated with narration and 
I'm just really excited. It's set in Chicago in the 1930s. Uh, Wright's powerful novel is an unsparing reflection on the poverty and feelings of hopelessness experienced by people in inner cities across the country and what it means to be Black in America. So it sounds like it's going to be heart-wrenching and it's going to be informative. Really thrilled that it's on my reading list. And I used to talk about it with a professor who's also read it. So I have very high hopes for this one and I think it's going to be excellent. All right, next up we have a self-help or is it self-improvement now? I don't know. I feel like the category has changed. Um, but the book is Burnout. Um, I really like this cover. I think I saw someone say they didn't like this cover. And I would say I get it, but I like it. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, this is just, I mean, can you guess? Burnout. Um, it says the secret to unlocking the stress cycle. It's been blurbed by Brene Brown. This book is a gift. I have been practicing their strategies and it's a total game changer. So um, I think many of us feel the pressure of the society we live in in a way of like feeling like everything you do has to be monetized and every hobby you have has to become a new sense of income. But I think that there's just this feeling of like any moment you have to just lay down, you feel like is wasted time because you're like, well, what else could I be doing? Like, isn't there something I should be accomplishing? And sometimes the biggest accomplishment is just laying the fuck down and like taking a nap. So I am interested in reading this one. I haven't heard too much about it, but I saw it and I was like, I feel that way. Let's try it. All right, another book for school, which I've never read, is Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse Five. I actually don't know what this book is about. It's a uh, world's greatest anti-war book centering on the infamous firebombing of Dresden, Billy Pilgrim's Odyssey through time reflects the mythic journey of our own fractured lives as we search for meaning and what we are afraid to know. Oh, that is an ominous and kind of vague um, description. <laughs> um, but... It's pretty short. So if you've read this one, let me know. Oh look, got it for three bucks and that is a steal. So um, yeah, I hope it's great. And I guess we'll see. All right, next up we have another book for school and that is Amy Tan's The Joy Luck Club. I was able to get The Joy Luck Club and The Vanishing Half switched onto my reading list for my final exam. And so I'm so excited to read this one. One of my really good grad school friends loves this book. Um, and I also, when I talked about this in my book haul, I saw some comments about like watching the movie afterwards too, because it's really good. So I'm really, really thrilled about this. So this book is about four Chinese women living in San Francisco who um, get together to eat dim sum and play mahjong and like just talk about life. And they have four daughters who were born in America. And so I think it's a reflection of family and identity and um, friendship and like just these conversations and how that, you know, how you just learn about these women's lives and the difference was the differences between their lives and their daughters' lives. And I just think it's gonna be really, really good. And then again, I can't wait to watch the movie afterwards, but I will wait until I finish the book. Mark my words, I'll read the book first, but again, one of my really good friends loves it. So I'm really excited to finish it so that I can talk to her about it. And again, talk to a professor about it and hopefully learn some more than what I learn while I'm reading it. Another book that I would love to read for school this month is Toni Morrison's Song of Solomon. I've read two Morrisons before, or is it three? I think it's two, um, but this is one where when I would look up like what to read next by Morrison or like best books by Toni Morrison, um, this was definitely like top three. I felt like I saw this one a lot. Um, I mean, I saw a lot of the titles all the time. But when you're like looking up a list, I feel like Song of Solomon is really high up there. So I am very, very excited to get to this one. Um, and I looked at the audiobook for this one. And I believe like the other two novels I've read by her, she is the one who's narrated 
the books, and her voice is amazing for audiobooks. So this is gonna be great. And again, it's just, it's gonna be a great school reading month. All right, next up, we have a book that I am thrilled about. Why? Well, I read the memoir of this author in January. And then when I talked about how I owned Hamnet, many people said, I can't wait for you to read it. Hamnet was one of my favorite books of the year, all this kind of stuff. So this is when a book that has been staring at me from the shelves for like at least a year now. Um, I'm intimidated by it because it looks smart. You know, <laughs> like when you look at it, you're like, that looks like an autobiography about someone old from history, you know? And so it becomes a little overwhelming when I'm just looking at it. But I have literally only heard amazing things. Jesse from Books and Bowties loves this book. And I feel like they have such incredible book recommendations. I'll make sure to link their channel down below. But I, when I've seen them talk about this book, I'm just like, yes, you know what I mean? So I'm excited to get to this one. And I loved Maggie O'Farrell's memoir, the writing. Oh my God, the writing. So I'm intimidated, but I'm excited. This is also a heavy book which it's always just so interesting. Like how does a book that's like the same size as other books weigh more? I'm thinking about the page weight, but anyway, that's, that's a tangent for another time, right? All right, another book for school is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. This is, yes, huh? The world's smallest book, my friends. Dear Lord, I uh, don't even know if it's a hundred pages. I'll tell you this, it is, it's 130. <laughs> um, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, I know the general story, I've never read this. So this will be great because it's also so short that I'll feel like I'm making real progress in my exam without having to read too much. You know what I mean? This will check a box without being super long. So it's gonna be great. All right, a romance that I'm really excited about that came out on March 1st. If you're watching this now, it came out on Tuesday of this week. So run, don't walk to get yourself a copy. But that is A Brush With Love, which by the way, let's talk about the cover, the toothpaste, the pink, the blue. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> I'm obsessed with it. Oh my God, and her name is Harper Horowitz, is anxiously awaiting placement into a top oral surgery residency program when she crashes literally into Dan Craig. Do you think it's Daniel Craig inspired? Despite their immediate connection, Harper would rather endure a Novocaine free root canal than face any distractions from her career goals, even one this adorable. <laughs> a first year dental student with a family legacy to contend with, Dan doesn't have the same passion for pulling teeth that Harper does. Though he finds himself falling for her, he is willing to play by Harper's rules that the two will be just friends. Cute, love it. Someone very near and dear to me has been in the dental industry for like 30 years. So I am gonna read this with a new appreciation for their career, I'm sure, and their journey into the dentist, the dental world. So um, I love a romance. I love a cover. It's going to be excellent. This came out earlier this week. So again, walk, don't run. Wait, <laughs> run, don't walk. Okay. <laughs> run, don't walk to the bookstore and pick yourself up a copy. And I have to thank both K Publishing and St. Martin's Press for sending me a copy of this book. Super, super thrilled to have received a copy and will be reading in March. Mark my words or <laughs> March my words. Didn't work, but I said it anyway. All right. And then the last book is, you know what? Again, these are high hopes for the wicked. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to finish all of these texts. But this is another book for school, and it's my sci-fi of the month, and that is Ursula K. Lee Gwynn's The Left Hand of Darkness. Um, 
I have heard pretty great things. I think it's so cool that I get to read a sci-fi for my final exam. I hear that this book really like set the stage for sci-fi in a lot of ways. So I don't really know what it's about at all. And the back is not helpful. So the synopsis is a mystery to all of us here. And the cover reminds me a lot of, what's his name? Like Mr. Freeze in the Batman movies or singular Batman movie. George Clooney, right? The nipple suit. Anyway, um, great cover. This is also, let me just say, a copy, a signed copy, deliberately, specifically for my mom. My grandma had met this author and asked her to sign it for my mom. So it has some sentimental value. And when she let me borrow it, I was like, I will probably annotate this. And she said, do it. Your grandma would love that. So. Anyway, I have, again, high hopes for this one. We'll see if I get to it, but those are the books in this March TBR. I am very, very excited about these books, and please let me know what books you're most excited about to read in March. Anyway, I love reading, and I love talking about books, and I love just general enthusiasm about what we're gonna read. So let me know what you're excited about. And there you have it. So thanks so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.